Good morning and welcome to St. Botolph's Church for this short act of worship. Today is Remembrance Sunday. We begin with the Collect for the Day. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all, govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations, divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin, to be subject to his just and gentle rule, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is taken from the prophecy of Micah, chapter 4, verses 1 to 5. Micah chapter 4, verses 1 to 5. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised up above the hills. People shall stream to it, and many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between many peoples, and shall arbitrate between strong nations far away. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. But they shall all sit under their own vines and under their own fig trees, and no one shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. For all the peoples walk, each in the name of its God, but we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 85, verses 8 to 13. Psalm 85, verses 8 to 13. The response to the psalm. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Show us your mercy, O Lord. I will listen to what the Lord God will say, for he shall speak peace to his people and to the faithful, that they turn not again to folly. Truly his salvation is near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness look down from heaven. Show us your mercy, O Lord. The Lord will indeed give all that is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him and direct his steps in the way. Show us your mercy, O Lord. The New Testament reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 4, verses 6 to 9. Philippians 4 verses 6 to 9. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. 
Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. Jesus Christ is the firstborn from the dead. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. And it's Matthew chapter 5. Verses 43 to the end. Matthew 5, 43 to the end. You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The First World War was described as the war to end all wars. Sadly, that purpose was not achieved, as conflicts have continued to rage across the globe up to the present day. What's more in itself, the Great War resulted in the devastating loss of millions of lives, not least the endless young men whose lives were so tragically cut short on the battlefields. For most people it has all become a distant memory, things which we perhaps learnt about in our history lessons at school. For those of us who have never experienced war firsthand, it's perhaps quite difficult to appreciate just how much suffering was involved and the horrific experiences so many people had to go through. So how vital it is that we continue to set aside this Sunday each year to remember to remember those who have given their lives in the service of their country in conflicts past and present, and the many whose lives continue to be scarred by those conflicts. It's important to remember, lest we forget. And as we remember, it's helpful to be reminded too of the implications that our remembering has for our daily living. Because as our Bible readings today remind us, as those who are committed to following Christ, 
Each of us are called to be peacemakers. It's easy to assume that this is primarily the task of politicians and the United Nations. But the truth is that in our daily lives, in our small way, we can indeed make a difference. The prophet Micah, prophesying back in the 8th century BC, sets forth a vision of a golden age when peace and prosperity will reign once more. And how will this come about? Well, underlying the picture of peoples and nations streaming to Jerusalem and to God's holy temple is a simple message. That true and lasting peace can only be achieved when people turn or return to the Lord, when they seek his truth and walk according to his way, when they acknowledge the supreme sovereignty of the living God. When this happens, people will no longer seek to resolve their differences by means of the sword but rather they learn to live in peace and harmony. And why should this be so? Well, it's because the source of true peace is God himself. The thing is, there can be no real peace in the world until we have peace with God, until we find that peace with God we cannot know real peace among ourselves. The Apostle Paul takes this further in our reading from his letter to the Philippians. Here he talks of what it means for us as believers to be people of peace. We have here the promise of the peace of God which passes all human understanding guarding our hearts and minds. God is with us, and we can know his perfect peace in our lives. Now the idea of peace in the New Testament derives its meaning from the Old Testament word for peace, shalom. It refers to rather more than our present-day understanding of peace, which tends to be simply about an absence of war and conflict. Rather, the biblical concept of peace has a root meaning of wholeness. It incorporates both our peace with God as well as our peace with other people. The peace which mends broken relationships. And in order to enjoy God's peace, we must be in relationship with him through his Son, Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Knowing God's peace comes from knowing God personally. And that knowledge of God's peace in our lives is sustained by immersing ourselves in prayer, by allowing our minds to be orientated towards godly thinking, to seek to value what is true, attractive and praiseworthy in other people. It's sustained by walking in accordance with God's word and by aiming to model all our relationships with others on Christ himself. If we do these things, we will know God's guarding peace. And then in our Gospel reading, the Lord Jesus outlines what lies at the heart of peacemaking. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. If we profess to be followers of Christ, then our love should be unlimited. If we're merely showing love to those we like and get on with, then what's the use in that? 
we're not doing anything substantially different to the way in which the vast majority of our society behaves. The thing is, God doesn't show any discrimination or differentiation in his love towards all whom he has made, the good and the bad, the righteous and the unrighteous. So if God is like this, then we too should be the same. And our Lord himself provides us with a supreme example of how we should love our enemies. So we need to be open to the transforming power of God's Holy Spirit in our lives. Because it is the Spirit working in our lives from day to day who fills us with God's peace and who directs us to demonstrate love to all without distinction. On this Remembrance Sunday, we're reminded that real peace begins with each and every one of us as those who seek to follow the Lord. It begins when we allow God's peace to fill and transform our lives and then when that peace radiates out through us to those amongst whom we live and work, then through our witness, others will come to know God's peace for themselves. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that we are reconciled to you through your Son and his saving work on the cross. Help us in turn to be agents of reconciliation in our daily lives. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. In Jesus' name. Amen. We come now to our act of remembrance. Let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who have died for their country in war, those whom we knew and whose memory we treasure, and all who have lived and died in the service of humanity. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them.
when you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we gave our today. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, from whose love in Christ we cannot be parted either by death or life, hear our prayers and thanksgivings for all whom we remember this day. Fulfill in them the purpose of your love and bring us all with them to your eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so to the blessing. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the Church, the Queen, the Commonwealth, and all people, unity, peace, and concord. And to us and all God's servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen.